Welcome back guys. Today I'm going to be showing you how I installed my boost and exhaust gas temperature gauges. Just about concluding my 18Z turbo conversion videos. So I'm going to start by plumbing my boost line anywhere between the turbocharger and the intake manifold. For me, this was on the part of the crossover pipe that I capped off earlier. To do this, I fitted a drip irrigation fitting into the cap and secured the boost line on with Araldite. I then chose to run the boost line through a separate hole in the firewall so that it wouldn't be kinked or squashed by other wires. It's important to use a rubber grommet in this hole so that the boost line doesn't chafe and cut on the car body. After extending the line with some more vacuum hose and joining this with another drip irrigation fitting and Araldite, that was the boost line run. The next step is going to be mounting the boost gauge on the pillar. You can see here I already have a little pillar pod that I made up myself for my oil pressure gauge that I installed prior to this video. It was just a matter of taking the pillar off and mounting the boost gauge above this. I took my homemade pillar pod off the car pillar and drilled holes ready for the new gauge cup. The gauge cup only came with one hole drilled in the back of it. I needed to run the boost line as well as the power to the lights in the gauge. So I needed to drill a second hole in the top of the gauge cup. To get the boost line up to the gauge on the pillar, I fed down a piece of wire, which you'll see me using a lot more in this video because it's really handy for pulling wires and other lines through holes that aren't easy to push the wires themselves through. Next, I drilled holes in the pillar mount so that the lines from the gauge could run back into the pillar and into the car. And of course, I put rubber grommets in these holes so that the lines wouldn't chafe on the pillar mount. Then it was time to feed the lines back from the gauge into the pillar. I extended the gauge lines so they reached to their respective power inputs and then it was time to thread everything through and solder it in. After heat shrinking of course. And then a quick test before I seal everything up and it was time to move on to the EGT gauge. First of all we want to look at where we're going to put this temperature probe. It turns out the flange on the back of my turbo already has a spot for one. After screwing in the probe and running the cables to where you're going to go through the firewall, it's time to thread these wires through the firewall. Once again, I'm going to grab out my trusty piece of wire and push that through first so it comes out the other side like so. Then after taping the wires from the probe to this wire, I'm going to very carefully thread these through. Then it's again time to mount the gauge. I decided to mount mine on my centre console piece here below the air conditioner controls because I thought it would actually fit quite nicely there and I'm going to put a turbo timer over the other side so it'll balance out symmetrically. I grab a hole saw just a couple mil bigger than the gauge so that this will fit comfortably and the lip on the front of the gauge will seal around the plastic. After mixing equal parts of this two-part hardener glue, I seal the edge of the gauge with this so it'll hold it firmly in place and seal nicely against the plastic. Then it's really just a matter of running wires and soldering everything together.
once again, I'm wiring what for me is the yellow dash wire light up to a separate switch that always has constant battery power to it so that I can choose to dim or brighten the backlights of these gauges whenever I like. And with that, it was time for a quick test and it looks like everything is working well. All right, so in daylight, it's all a bit easier to see. I've run the boost gauge out of the crossover pipe here, or the line for the boost gauge. I've run the line for the EGT out of my exhaust flange there. That was pre-prepared for me. Um, and they both run back. So I've got a separate in for the boost gauge there, just so that doesn't chafe or kink. And then my EGT has gone in my loom with my other wires there. Underneath, you can see that they both, the boost gauge line comes out over there. The EGT line comes out over here. Boost gauge goes up to my gauges here. So that one's here, along with my oil pressure. And the EGT runs across here like so. Now I've made it so that I've got this switch here that is always wired to the battery so that I can turn the lights on and off if I want and that's more so so I can turn them off during the day um, because they look a little bit tacky with lights on in the day and apart from that yeah they are all wired up. After some quick final additions, I was right ready to drive off and give my turbocharged Land Cruiser a real test. Be sure to catch the next video where I compare my stock 1HZ to its turbocharged upgraded form.